This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. Welcome to another video. Today we're actually not doing a video tutorial. We're not even doing a review. This is me just giving you my initial feedback and thoughts and a brief little overview on the new Real Lens Flares plugin by Red Giant slash Maxon as part of their VFX suite. So this new plugin is actually very interesting because the whole idea is that it's kind of like a lens simulation engine and its sole purpose is to kind of recreate the optical qualities of a real glass lens and how it calculates the rays of light. It's bouncing around inside the glass to create a beautiful visual lens flare. And the goal is to make it as accurate as possible. And the goal isn't just to make it look very realistic, but also how it kind of moves and morphs and kind of reacts like a real light source. It's different from a traditional lens flare tool where things are more computed from a 2D primitive element from like 2D assets or images of real lens flares. So again, not an official review or tutorial, just kind of me blabbering about this new tool and kind of my thoughts here and how it compares to optical flares and no light factory, etc. So here inside After Effects, I have the real lens flare plugin applied to my footage. And I'm not really sure if you can kind of see it in the video, but I have a very nice natural lens flare element right over here. And if I move it, you'll see that kind of the difference here. I kind of have a nice kind of glow, a nice little sheen, um, kind of a starburst effect and some lens elements right here. Very, very natural. Now, the effect itself inside the effects control is actually very, very simple. You have controls similar to what you're used to, like the position of the light source, the color temperature, the brightness size, the color filter. You can control the actual light source itself, the actual core of the light source, as well as the flare properties like the starburst effects and the lens elements right here. So you can control the exposure scale and all that stuff independently. And also you have instant control to the lens f-stop. So for example, if you were shooting a landscape shot, you would probably have a higher f-stop um, so we've changed it to like an eight, for example. Um, the elements are a lot sharper, a little bit more narrow because the aperture does have a huge play on the way um, lens flares are actually calculated and rendered. Um, but if you have a more shallow depth of field, like an F1.4 prime lens, for example, things are a little bit more soft and your lens flare kind of reacts. So it's very, very realistic. It kind of simulates the real actual properties of lens flares and real lenses. And towards the bottom, we have the render settings which can control the overlay, which is kind of like the graphical interface of the plugin, as well as the color mode and quality. Now I'm running on an M1 Pro Mac right now, and it can be a little sluggish sometimes if you're working in production quality. As you can see, it kind of stutters just a little bit here. And if you can play around with the brightness to let's say like 5%, it takes just a little hair to kind of render. Um, so just something to keep in mind, if you have a beefier GPU, I'm sure it'd be a little bit faster. I like to work with the fast quality, so it's a little bit faster to render. And then when it's time to actually render the beauty pass and stuff like that, I would change it to uh, production. And also you have support for different color modes like ACES as well as HDR, so on and so forth. Now all that stuff is the boring part. The really cool stuff is in the actual designer itself. So like I was saying, the cool part is you can pretty much modify almost any property of the lens to change the look and feel of things. You can dial in the aperture, tweak the individual anti-reflective coating of the lens elements, move the sensor around, and even introduce some weird light artifacts. So for example, I can go ahead and click on the light source right here, and I can go ahead and change the brightness down to like 50, and that would just affect the light source itself. I can increase the size of the individual light source to something like two, make it a little bit brighter. I can hop into the lens element here and change the anti-reflective coating of this particular lens element and change the refractive index and do all sorts of really geeky stuff that I don't quite understand. But what I do understand is the aperture and the aperture changes the look and feel of your lens by quite a bit actually. Um, so for example, like I said earlier with the f-stop changes something like 2.8 and that will kind of change your lens element a little bit here. If you kind of have a starburst effect, the number of points in that kind of starburst is kind of defined by the number of blades. So if you have like three blades in your aperture, which is very, very small, you, you get kind of like a choppy look at all the other elements. It kind of renders appropriately that way versus something like a nine blade aperture, which is a little bit more smooth, more detail, and things kind of update accordingly there. You can play around with the curve and the twist and even add some imperfections to the edges. You can hop into the sensor, the convergence point of the lens, whether it's film or a digital sensor, and you can actually move this sensor around and it will actually change the look and feel of your lens flare element here and change the horizontal size and whatnot. Um, it's very, very geeky stuff. So that is kind of the technical aspect of it. Um, it comes with some presets here, the core projections, which from what I understand, is kind of like the core elements of the lens flare. So it's not talking about the lens itself. It's not talking about how the lens you know, messes around with the light and all that stuff. 
it's basically talking about the core elements, what's included in your flare. So for example, I can select a basic uh, glow ball projection and it's literally just a glow ball right here. Or we can do something like a spiky ball, which will add some stuff here. Um, or you can add some, you know, some starburst or even an anamorphic streak, which you can kind of use to kind of animate more, you know, sci-fi, Michael Bay type stuff here. Um, but in the projection strip right here, you can see that it's made up of this little single spike, which you can go in here and change the size of, for an example, you can change the color to something more like red, um, for example. And it also adds a reflection, which is kind of like what I consider kind of like a glare. So the preset is all pretty much customizable. You can select whatever you want, halo light speed, for example, and go into the individual light source and change the exposure, the size, the color, the number of rings, so on and so forth, as well as the reflection or the glare. And you'll see what's going on here. And if you wanted to add more core projections, you can go ahead and click and add one of the five types of stuff here. For example, if you wanted to add a gate flare, for example, um, you can go ahead and add that. Or if you wanted to add a halo, for an example, you can go in here to the halo and change the size of things and, um, you know, kind of mess around with that. And so it's all customizable. So these are the elements of the lens flare. You can go into the lens itself, the simulation, and go ahead and play around with all these other elements here to kind of fine tune it that. There's a second category of lens presets called lens simulation, from what I understand. And these kind of play around with not only the core projections, but also the different type of lenses. So Maxon has kind of pre-configured some popular lenses like the Canon 18 55 or a Leica lens, like a 35, or let's say a Panavision lens. And when you click on it, it will kind of apply some basic elements as well as add a different kind of lens and lens simulation. And so I'm assuming this kind of mimics the Panavision Primo 15 to 40 millimeter lens. All this stuff changes, all the presets in this lens change. And so it simulates this lens and all the lenses look pretty realistic and pretty natural as well. Um, now, if you want something more stylized, more similar to like optical flares or Noah's Light Factory, you have the stylized flares. Now, a lot of these look very, very, very similar to No Light Factory, um, especially this one right here. Looks very, very stylized. It doesn't exactly look very natural per se, um, but it definitely looks stylized. It definitely looks good in my opinion. So if you're doing motion graphics, you want a more stylized look. Um, these presets are pretty nice. They render nicely, they look pretty. And of course you can go in here and tweak the individual parameters and it reacts really well. The presets are a little bit confusing though. So for example, from what I understand, you can't actually create your own lens from scratch per se. You can modify the existing lenses, um, but you can't build your own lens, like add like 10 lens elements and you know make it this wide, this long, this size, um, you know, from scratch as of now. So you're kind of stuck with the lenses they kind of give you and modify it from there as of today anyways. And this is just the first version. So I'm sure they're gonna add new features in the future. What's interesting is that I can't seem to find a way to let's say select a core projection preset but apply, you know, this lens simulation, you know, like what if I wanted like, you know, this preset here, Halo light speed, but I want it to be from an 18 to 55 Canon lens perspective. There doesn't seem to be a way to kind of um, combine the two as of right now. The last thing I want to talk about is actually the behavior or rendering of the real lens flare plugin. Um, I think it renders very, very nicely. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So as you move the lens flare around, it kind of moves and behaves very, very realistically. But aside from that, even from the exposure, for example, like for example, if I go in here and I decrease the brightness of the light source, as you can see, it renders in a way where, you know, it doesn't seem like you're just lowering the opacity of the stock element of this glow ball. You know what I mean? It actually looks like the source of the light is actually decreasing. And then the elements around it behave very, very realistically, rather than just lowering the opacity of the element or getting this weird kind of grayish um, fade off whenever you fade like really bright stuff to darkness, it kind of shrinks and grows in a very, very natural and realistic way, in my opinion. And the same goes for the size as well as the size and scale and exposure of the flare property. So if I decrease the exposure, it doesn't seem like someone's just lowering the opacity of the texture of the image or whatever. Um, things kind of behave as you would expect from the exposure. 
and it just behaves and renders very, very naturally, which I think looks really, really nicely. Again, I can't tell if you guys can see this through the compression of YouTube. So overall, a pretty interesting product from the folks over at Red Giant slash Maxon. As part of their VFX suite, I really hate how they stopped selling individual products and everything is either based on the suite or it's a subscription based. But that is for another video. Before I go, I want to give a quick thanks for our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to create an amazing website business for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing themes to choose from, fully customized supposed to connect the way you want to look like without having any code knowledge required. They have awesome 25 hour support. And best of all, use the promo code DOJO at checkout. You can actually save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So this is pretty much my first impressions of the Real Lens Flare plugin by Red Giant slash Maxon. I'm um, again, not a full video tutorial, not even a full review or anything, just kind of my initial thoughts on it. Let me know what you guys think down below about this plugin, would you guys use it, would you guys buy it? Leave a comment down below if you guys want a full review, give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.